and welcome to part two of this series where I'm talking about eating a gluten-free and dairy-free diet. So today we are continuing talking about gluten-free and dairy-free foods and diets and routines and all of those things, shopping for those foods. If you missed part one of this video, I will link that up here somewhere and down below. In that video, I am talking about the five tips that I have for you if this is something that you are thinking about doing for yourself or for your family. Uh, in this video, I wanna talk about the specifics. So I want to talk about kind of our routine of meal planning and what it, what our structure looks like with that, what an average meal looks like for us and kind of our meal formula. And then I wanna go through and I'm taking you to my favorite grocery store, which is Aldi. And I'm gonna show you some of the products that I really like. And then I'm gonna show you some that I don't like. And then I'm also gonna show you some that I've tried that maybe we purchase sometimes but not all the time. So we're gonna go through and talk about all of those things. Before I move on, if this is your first time here, thank you for stopping by. My name is Kelly and I like to share about secondhand shopping and our life as a family. So if you are interested in affordable living, in yard sale and thrift shopping, in just general life details, then you can click that red subscribe button and I would love to have you stick around. This topic feels really overwhelming and I have a lot of knowledge about it and I want to share it in a clear and concise way. So I think where we are just going to start is talking about what kind of meals we eat on a weekly basis. So I'm just gonna take you through a typical day and talk about the things that I normally make for meals and then I'll get into some things that we purchase. So if you follow me on Instagram, I share a lot of the food that we eat over there. So that's Yard Sale Squad. You can follow me there. Same name as this channel. But I usually say that there are three boxes that I like to hit for a recipe to become a regular in our house. And that is for it to be fairly simple, for it to be nutritious, and for it to taste good. Um, those three things are the things that I want and they're important for me to give to my family too. So going through a typical day in our life and the things that go through my mind when I am meal planning. For breakfast, I usually like to have some things to pull from in the freezer. So I will make batches of muffins or batches of pancakes. Uh, I use oats a lot, so I will use those for oat flour. Um, I also use those to make overnight oats, which are great, and the kids eat them and I eat them. Of course, I'll also make regular oatmeal. I have a great recipe for chunky monkey oats that I use a lot. And then to go along with that, I will make eggs sometimes and I will make the Aldi apple maple turkey sausage. I also like bacon. Usually if I'm making eggs, it's just me and my husband that will eat them unless they're hard boiled and then sometimes my son will get in on that. And I'm gonna skip over lunch because typically lunch for us is just leftovers of the previous night's dinner. So let me just skip on to dinner. Dinner for us in terms of excluding dairy and excluding gluten or at least limiting it usually, um, these are the things that we frequently have. I frequently make soups. I frequently make bowls in different forms that have a base of rice and then have different toppings on them. And then I also frequently make some meat main dish with two sides, one of them usually being a vegetable, green beans, corn, roasted vegetables, roasted Brussels sprouts. And then the other will be some form of roasted potatoes. And that's kind of the things that I pull from most often. Now within that, there is a lot of variety, but those are kind of my go-tos. So now that you know kind of what we make, I just wanted to talk about some of the things I like and some of the things that I don't like. So let's just start by category. When I first walk into my Aldi, I'm greeted by the produce section. Obviously in terms of gluten and dairy, everything here is fair game, so you can have at it. Uh, I go from there into the meats and cheeses section. Aldi has one variety of dairy-free cheese. It is a shredded mozzarella cheese. And I would advise you to never buy it ever, ever, ever. <laughs> it is so bad. Um, it's plant-based. I don't really know what the ingredients are, um, but it's, it's so bad. The good thing about this, not just about dairy-free and gluten-free, but all things in general, is that Aldi does have their double money-back guarantee. So if you are unaware what this means, it means that say you buy this questionable, terrible cheese, 
and you decide that you want to return it, you can do so and you can get a replacement and you can get your money back. Um, they don't ask questions. You don't have to explain it to them. It doesn't have to be only if the product is out of date or only if it's spoiled. If you buy something and you don't like it or your family doesn't like it, you can return it and get money back and get the product replaced. So I think that makes this process a little bit easier and you don't feel like you're taking such a gamble when you buy this expensive product that you've never tried before. Um, but I will go ahead and tell you that the cheese was not a favorite and I only tried about two or three pieces of the shreds and that was enough to know that it was just not good. Right there in that deli section is where you can find hummus. Hummus is not for everybody. There are some people that just don't really like that taste and I totally get it. Um, but hummus is something that I really like because it's relatively healthy and it comes in different flavors. So this can be a good substitute if you're someone like me who really likes the chip and dip idea, um, but you are trying to avoid dairy and do something that is not quite so bad for you. The pine nut hummus is my absolute favorite. The garlic is also very good, but it is very, very strong on the garlic. The only other one that I have tried is the spicy one, and I thought I could hang, but I can't. Uh, my husband, however, did polish it off, and he liked it. All right, I'm gonna move from there into snacks. Um, you have to be really careful with gluten-free and dairy-free things because if they are made from a brand that really specializes in that and really plays that up in their marketing, then you're gonna pay more for it. So just look at the labels and pay attention. And I say that because there are certain products that are not marketed as gluten-free, but they are in fact gluten-free. Same with dairy-free things, but you just have to read the labels. Um, we are big fans of the multi-grain and flaxseed tortilla chips, but the regular tortilla chips are also great, and both of them are gluten-free and dairy-free. I mentioned the pine nut hummus. Um, I've mentioned the pita chips. I think that they are great, but again, they do have gluten. If you are looking for an alternative as far as some sort of chip or cracker, I would recommend either the sweet chili chips. To me, these taste very similar to the salsa sun chips. They sort of have that sun chip Dorito vibe to them, and they're very good with hummus. Also, they make different versions of rice crackers. Again, these are a little more expensive, so I pretty much buy one box a week, and that is my go-to snack. Um, but the roasted red pepper flavor is excellent. In terms of breakfast items, again, really read the label. When it comes to oats, it's a little bit tricky, and it depends on how strict you're trying to be. Aldi does not sell gluten-free oats, uh, but they do sell big tubs of oats at what I feel like is a decent price. Supposedly, the actual oats don't contain gluten. They may just be processed in a plant that processes gluten. So right now, for me, I feel like that is okay just because the gluten-free oats are so much more expensive and I have to buy them at a separate store. Another thing to pay attention to is a lot of varieties of Cheerios are gluten-free. So that could be a good snack for you or your kids. But pay attention, Aldi's brand of Honey Nut Cheerios for some reason is not gluten-free, but the name brand of Honey Nut Cheerios is. Using Cheerios and using oats can be a really good way to make cereal bars and granola bars or your own granola. And then not only do you know that they're gluten-free, that they're dairy-free, but you can also control how much sweetness and what ingredients you are contributing to the bars. Okay, let's talk about breads for a minute. Um, bread is tricky at Aldi. Um, if I'm not looking for a dairy-free option, then this is the bread that I really like to go for. It is a lower calorie slice. It is thinner. Um, I really like it. Um, they're gluten-free bread. Um, there are a few things that I'm going to touch on that the price of that item versus what you would normally buy is just almost painful to see the comparison of, and bread is one of them. I don't know if the ingredients in gluten-free bread are just more expensive, but at Aldi you have two options. You have a white loaf and a wheat loaf, and they are in a pan style, and they are going to run you over $5 for one loaf of bread. 
we just don't use bread enough to justify that. Um, and on top of that, I don't think that they are very good. I think that they are dry. And one time I bought it and my son said that he did not care for it. And I thought, if you don't care for it and I don't care for it, I'm not going to spend $5 a loaf on it. Unfortunately, I feel the same way about their gluten-free wraps. And I wish I didn't because I really like tortillas. Uh, I mentioned that in my last video. In terms of gluten, that's one of the things that I really like is just a good flour tortilla um, but it's not worth the price markup for me so usually I will just do without and then we will splurge every now and then and I will treat myself to the real thing okay let's talk about pastas for a minute Aldi actually does have a few different options for gluten-free pasta so I will put my favorite one here now it's not exactly like regular pasta but it's fairly close um, it is a lot closer than some of the others that I have tried, and here's my experience with pasta. Again, it is more expensive, so you just have to know that up front. We don't buy pasta all the time. I would say we buy it maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, and then we will just make spaghetti with that. When it comes to pasta, what I have to say is if it is rice-based, corn-based, quinoa-based, any of those are usually pretty safe. I don't have experience with lentil pasta, so I cannot speak to that, but I have tried chickpea pasta. I made pasta salad with it one time, and I disliked it so much that I think I ended up just eating something completely altogether different. I would put chickpea pasta on the level of the cheese. Okay, moving on from pasta, let's talk about baking for a minute. I mentioned some alternates to all-purpose flour in my last video, again. When you look at the price of all-purpose flour, which I think runs somewhere like less than $2 a bag at Aldi versus a bag of almond flour, which is like $5 a bag, that hurts and that's hard to swallow. Uh, so for this reason, I use oat flour most of the time. I do also use their almond flour. Uh, a little tip with their almond flour, sometimes I find it to be a little bit coarse. And so if you have something like a food processor or a blender, or a mixer, a little smoothie maker, something that has a blade that can chop it up and make it more of a fine flour, I would advise doing that. If you're spending this much money on flour and you're trying to make a baked good, you want it to be as good as possible and you definitely don't want to have coarse pieces of flour in your baked goods. I also mentioned gluten-free all-purpose flours. Aldi does not have one of those available currently, but I will say that I've tried several brands and honestly, I'm not crazy about the way that they taste. Um, I haven't tried them in a lot of recipes. I've mainly tried them in pancakes and waffles and I've been really underwhelmed. And like I said, if you're gonna spend that much money on something, you really want it to taste great. So in applications like this, I prefer oat flour or almond flour, and then occasionally just splurging and using the real deal all-purpose flour. In terms of the refrigerated section, we use regular original unsweetened almond milk, and then we use unsweetened vanilla almond milk. I can drink both of them just fine, and usually per week I will buy a half gallon of each. And that way, if I'm making something savory, I can use the original almond milk, and if I'm making something sweet, I can use the vanilla. And then the last specific product I wanted to mention is something frozen. I really don't do frozen prepared foods a lot, uh, but they do have some frozen gluten-free nuggets that I have tried. And the closest thing I can compare them to is sweet and sour chicken without the sauce on top. They have like a tempura flake breading on them and I liked them okay. My daughter liked them, my son did not. Um, but that is there for you. So if you are somebody who benefits from having nuggets in your house, maybe you have kids, then that could be a good option for you just to have on hand. So a lot of this, it can be really hard in the beginning. And I talked about that in my last video, but so much of it comes down to a mindset shift. Uh, some things you do without uh, just because of cost or convenience. Uh, I don't really buy graham crackers anymore. We used to buy those a lot. And now instead of that being our kid's snack, I will supplement it with baked chips, tortilla chips, veggie straws, sliced apples, sliced bananas, any, any sort of fruit like that. Uh, so we have sort of found alternate solutions. I will give them Cheerios just dry in a bowl. So those have become, again, more of a splurge item. 
Like I mentioned, we don't really buy bread anymore. We don't really buy cheese. And I think cheese is where a lot of people get hung up and I totally understand. There are a lot of applications where cheese is the star of a dish. You know, you think about uh, grilled cheese or mac and cheese. Uh, it's really hard to have a grilled cheese without pieces of cheese. And it's really hard to replicate mac and cheese without cheese. I mentioned in my last video, I've tried it many different times, many different ways. Uh, the taking raw cashews and soaking them and making cashew cream, using butternut squash, using carrots, using nutritional yeast. And it's all fine, but I don't think that any of it really does a good job of replacing the actual thing. So those things like nutritional yeast and raw cashews, nutritional yeast, I actually found I didn't care for the taste of that, so I just don't buy it. And then raw cashews are very, very expensive, so I only buy those every now and again, probably like twice a year, because it's just not something that's really worth it for me. So in those dishes, cheese is really the star. But in some other things, like a sandwich, or tacos, or nachos, or pasta dishes, it's really just about reframing your mindset. And like I said, some things are gonna be easier for you than other things. We all have our things that we really enjoy that are sort of more priority for us. But it's just thinking about things in a different way. For example, tonight we are having sheet pan nachos. Typically, when you think about nachos, you picture cheese, you picture nacho cheese, you picture sour cream, and there's a lot of dairy involved there. So we just take an alternate approach, and instead of that being your flavor and sauce component, we have salsa and we have guacamole. So we still have the beans, we still have the chips, we still have the seasoned meat. We just change it up with our sauces. So it still offers flavor, it still offers that sauce component that you want without there being any dairy involved. And then the chips, of course, are gluten-free, so you don't have to worry about that. When we have pasta dishes, instead of having something that is really heavy, like a mac and cheese or an Alfredo, we will just opt for having spaghetti. And typically, it is just taking those noodles that I mentioned I like, and then I will brown some ground turkey from Aldi, and then my favorite pasta sauce is their organic tomato basil. And that's really it. Another thing I discovered a long time ago, actually way back when, when I worked at Subway in high school, was that adding cheese to your sandwich isn't necessarily a huge thing. Now again, some people will disagree with me, so you know, that's your own personal choice. But if you go somewhere like Subway, uh, and you have all of these other vegetables and sauces or oil and vinegar, salt and pepper, and your meat and your bread, you'd be surprised. You really don't miss the cheese enough. So if you're watching this video for health reasons or for weight loss reasons, even just cutting back on simple things like that, still allowing yourself to splurge every now and then on the things where cheese or dairy are the star, but on the things where they really don't matter that much, just trying them without and seeing if you miss it. Um, I'm just saying it's worth a try. All right, squad, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you know my heart that this is not at all me telling you to live this lifestyle or shop this way. But for those of you who are, I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Like I said, I talk about these things a lot on Instagram and I share photos of our meals and our meal plans so you can follow me there as well. All right, you guys, thanks for watching and I will be talking to you in the next video.